Ray Davis is a running back who has gotten some press, but specifically in fantasy circles, Davis is not talked about too much. The main reason for this? Ray Davis turns 25 years old in November. While I certainly don't love that in a prospect overall, Davis is a top five running back in this class for me. The following clip from the Fantasy For Real podcast will explain why, and the links for the podcast can be found in the description. So let's get into Ray Davis. Ray Davis's background is important because it is about how he got his start. It is about how our beliefs about early production, as good as they are and as important as they are, need to always be taken into context of what a player's backstory might be. A lot of the early details, and I'm going to go through them very quickly because I don't want to spend too much time on them, are going to be from a Zach Kiefer article in The Athletic. Ray Davis was born one of 15 siblings and to two parents who were incarcerated off and on. He was awarded the state at eight and was in a homeless shelter at 12 years old. I don't want to linger on the situation too much, but the entire point of getting into this opening is that his reasons for landing in Juco were fairly reasonable. So Ray Davis doesn't get a high recruiting profile coming out of high school and goes to junior college. He does very well as a running back or presumably as a running back or in some way gets the attention of of Temple. I don't really look up the junior college stats very often. So he goes to Temple in 2019 and he breaks out immediately in the backfield, right? For all the conversations that we have about old man Ray Davis and how this guy's going to come into the NFL at such an old age, at 19 years old, he had 15 for 92 against Maryland on a Temple team that did not have as much you know, around him. He had 30 carries for 147 yards and two touchdowns in their other game against the Power 5 Conference against Georgia Tech. And this was, again, all before turning 20 years old. Now, again, that also makes it 2019. That was a long time ago. But the point is that Ray Davis wasn't a bad football player when we first got to see him. And we first got to see him at 19 years old. So it's not just like he's this guy who couldn't beat anybody and then he got old and he got big and then he was able to finally beat up on 19 or 20 year old kids. No, at 19 years old, he was doing extremely impressive things against teams that were better suited to do impressive things than his own Temple team. Another topic I love talking about on this show is how devastating COVID was specifically to the football world, which obviously there's other things going on, but we're talking in this show about how devastating it was to things like developmental schedules. And while the minor conferences in general did not have a very good time with COVID or scheduling things with COVID, Temple in particular had a disastrous season in 2020. There was a Chris Vanini article on The Athletic, didn't try to make him from the same source, just found him when I was searching for him, called Temple's 2020 season was a week-to-week struggle. Was it worth it? This is a team that did not play until October, and after so many things went wrong for the team, you know they didn't know how eligibility rules were going to work for the next year. They didn't know if they were going to lose eligibility for playing on this Temple team, so they ultimately decided a good number of the players to opt out and prepare for transfers. Now, I don't know if Ray Davis was injured or if he just opted out and prepared for transferring, but the bottom line is that in 2020, his season basically got erased by COVID-19. 2021, he comes in key year, 21 years old, going to turn 22 years old in the season. This is a big key year where he can leave and still be a relatively young running back, or at least to some extent. He's playing at Vanderbilt. He's playing in the SEC. And in the third game of the season, he suffers a torn toe ligament, which is a little bit of a different one, but the toe ligament takes him out for the rest of the 2021 season, and he does virtually nothing in the season. Then in 2022 and 2023, he is outstanding. And he is outstanding for two teams that are very, very hard to be outstanding for. Between 2019 and 2023, when you take out the year that Ray Davis played in, Vanderbilt is 7 and 38. With the year that Ray Davis played in, he was five and seven that year. Now, five and seven is not great, but when you're considering that compared to a four or five year sample of going seven and 38, that's a big difference. 
since 2019, the second best Vanderbilt record is three and nine. And the two SEC wins were the most that Vanderbilt's had in this stretch as well. They dismantled Florida and Kentucky and Ray Davis was the main player to do it in both games with 26, 129 and one and 30 and 122 and one in the other. He then basically does the same thing for Kentucky. Now, people underrate the crap out of the Kentucky program when they just watch it casually. It's not a great football program, but if you think they get blown out every year like Vanderbilt does, you clearly haven't been paying attention to the Mark Stoops era. But even within the Mark Stoops era, Ray Davis is a shining light of running back success on this team. And he dominated the backfield in both teams for both teams and without any backup running backs having much success at all behind them while doing this he also accumulated over 60 receptions showing a consistent knack for catching the ball turning up field and also being able to break a tackle while doing so which leads me to the traits themselves because usually i don't spend this much time talking about analytical sides of running backs because I believe it is a traits driven position. But at the end of the day, when a player has production, a production profile that is so bad, like Ray Davis is because of the age that is being so fundamentally dismissed by so many people because of the age, you have to talk about it for a little bit. But in terms of the traits themselves, they're not elite traits, but he is very athletic and he has a nice blend of traits. He has a very nice BMI. He ran a low 4.5, 4, 4.52, I believe was the official. He has very solid power and he keeps that low center of gravity, which really helps him with that power. He has that natural pass catching that we were just talking about. And he's a really good natural lateral mover who has a really nice running pace, who can really vary himself very well to adjust and help him with some of those things like his power and like his ability to make people miss on the outside so he's not a perfect running back he doesn't have the upside traits that you really look for but in a class like this where we're just looking for some really good guys he's one of the best box checkers to me for everything other than the fact that he's turning 25 in november and on that note of turning 25 in november i just feel fundamentally like longevity at the running back position is very overrated in terms of just the number itself yes the number matters but the fact of the matter is when the whole market moves around a number and is scared of a number you just have to take it for what it is and sometimes say you know this might be a buying opportunity I don't like to target older players, but if every single person who dictates the market is crushing older players and not evaluating them at all because they're just saying, well, he's old, so I don't care. Well, then those are players that I am going to look through and find the one or two guys that I believe might be buying opportunities. And in this class, that is Malik Washington, who is also small, and Ray Davis. And I'll also say this in the same context of buying opportunities. My most successful dynasty league over the last three years is a dynasty league where I went into the auction knowing that the teams around me were going to overpay for running backs compared to my board. And so I went fully on board with a zero RB strategy and I ended up with running backs like Gus Edwards, Leonard Fournette, and most importantly to this conversation, Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert is a guy who three years ago I got for nothing because he was too old. And not only has he been a good running back for three three years, but I am in trade negotiations trying to use Raheem Mostert to trade up in draft picks to get higher into the first round with other things, obviously to get higher into the second round. Raheem Mostert has still trade value at th almost 32 years old now, because when you're playing and when you're good, it's just going to keep going. Now, do I think Ray Davis is going to be that guy? Most likely not, but I don't, I don't care about any age he gets to in his rookie contract. If this guy plays well under a rookie contract, they're going to let him play well for a rookie contract. Again, everything's a big if in these situations. He might end up going to a team that pays $40 million to Saquon Barkley this offseason. And then it's just, he's a backup and nothing else. But he could also go to that a, a team that's like that, but then the running back who's in front of him gets hurt, and he ends up being the guy for the whole season, and then he ends up impressing. You really don't know what's going to happen, and he has the three-down skill set, and that's the bottom line. He has the three-down skill set with the BMI, with the speed, with the power, with the pass-catching ability, that if he gets into one of these roles, I think he can do a really 
really good and consistent job with just a little bit of pop on top. So is Ray Davis a great running back prospect? No, he's not. And being a top five running back in this class for me does say something about how I view the 2024 running back class in terms of high upside fantasy running backs. But at the end of the day, Ray Davis is a player who does so many things well, and I'm very excited about the fact that his age is causing people to dismiss him because I do think that the age should cause people to undervalue or lower the value on him, but it seems like it's causing him to be dismissed outright. And if that's what it takes to get me a value in a marketplace, I will take it up every single time. And so that's all I have for this segment of the show. Either Sunday morning or Monday morning, I will be releasing a show that covers the most recent free agency news as well as covers Kamani Vidal of Troy. And I also go over some winners and losers from the early free agency period. But until then, see you next time.